Hi. I'm not wearing pants. I'm not wearing pants. I'm not wearing pants. Have you ever had that dream where you go to school and then you realize you're not wearing pants? Me neither. I'm not wearing pants. Let's fix that. A little over a year ago, I found this fantastic cotton blend, as far as I can tell, suiting material from Goodwill. I got about nine yards of this stuff for $6. Incredible steal. I knew immediately once I measured how much I had when I got home that I wanted to make a three-piece suit. So the first thing I did around January of this year is I made a haori, which is a Japanese overcoat worn with kimono. You can also just wear them. This is so incredibly comfy. I wear this constantly. Um, you might be even be able to see it. I need to wash it because it's got some staining on it. But I did all of the stitching by hand. I did some piping details and used some sashiko thread. And so that's a design element I want to carry forward on my trousers. I had this fantastic cherry blossom print fabric, which I couldn't find when I went back to go and buy lining for my pants. So instead I have what they're calling a Christmas print, just some red with white dots. Very classic for a suiting, a pant lining. It is kilt and cotton rather than like a rayon Bemberg lining or anything like that. Just because I did cotton on this one because I wanted the extra warmth of the cotton. And let me tell you, this wears like a blanket. It is fantastic. So I do need to take some new measurements because I've been losing circumference off of my hips, which means my current block for my pants doesn't work. So let's go through those measurements and then we'll go through the drafting process. First step is to find your natural waistline. Not where you think your waist is, but your natural waist. So to do that, I've just got some thin dollar yard elastic. And we're just gonna tie that, not like super tightly, just, you know, enough that it will slide into place when we move around. So I'm just tying this on, doing some bending and stretching and getting that to go right. Yep, that's where my waistband is. I am extremely short waisted because under bust waist. That's like three inches, whatever. Then we're gonna measure that. We're gonna take two measurements off of each of our circumferences. We're gonna take the whole circumference, pretty much just directly where that elastic actually goes. And you're gonna mark, write that down. Then, you're gonna find where your side seams are. And if you're wearing a tank top like I am, you can potentially use that as a guide. My side seams are a little bit crooked because I'm wearing this apparently a little bit crooked. But I can see that I want them to be directly underneath my armpit, checking on both sides. And then again, making sure that's pretty much right where the elastic is. And then mark down that measurement. By doing the full circumference and then the front measurement, we don't have to try and work, a, work out the back because the back is just going to be the full circumference minus the front. If you're like me, you've got more in the front than you do in the back, but there are plenty of people who've got more in the back than they do in the front. For the hip measurement, we're gonna find the widest part of your hip. And I always have trouble with my tape sliding around on my hip for that. I'm going to give myself a little bit of ease. I'm not pulling it tight because this is the measurement that you're wanting to be comfortable. 
And you're going to want to check if you've got a mirror, try and make sure you're even, you know, parallel with the floor. So take a note of that measurement. And then again, find that front width. And so that way, front width subtracted from the full circumference, that gives you the back width. And then you're going to want to find your hip height. And so I'm going to hold the end of the measuring tape at the elastic. And then I'm going to find where the measuring tape starts to fall off in my body. This is just draping. I'm letting the tail hang down. And I can see right about here is where it starts to fall off of my body. That means this is literally the widest part. Everything else goes in. So I make note of that measurement. Do the same on the front. So it starts to fall out right here. And it's about even there. So, but I'm going to mark it about here. And then you're going to do the same in the back. This one might be a little bit trickier. And it's my go to see. I've actually got a bit of a gap there before it falls off. And that's just because, you know, I have a back dip. I'm going to say right there is where it starts to fall off. So that's where I'm going to mark. Then we're going to want the entire length of the pant leg. And to do that, we're going to actually let the end dangle. We're going to hold this up to the waist, and we're going to let the tape just brush the floor. And we want it to hang down pretty straight. And that's going to give us our leg lengths. My tape's a little bendy at the end, so that's about where I'm going to do it. And for good measure, you can do the same off of the front. And again, just where the end of the tape dangles on the floor, make note of that length. That's your total leg length, plus you're going to have it up. But having it to the floor is a good reference point, because that way you know when you hem it, if you base it off of that measurement, it's going to be a nice parallel, even hem. The next measurement is actually going to be your crotch length. So for this, we're going to do the tape between the legs. Yep, we're flossing. And hold that up so that the end of the tape hits the elastic. Get it in there nice and snug, but not like giving you a wedgie or anything. And mark that length. That's going to be your crotch length. Then we need one more measurement that I actually recommend using a straight ruler for. I'm not sure where my smaller one is, so I'm just going to use this big one. And we're going to sit down. <clears throat> now, I don't have a perfectly flat chair, and that's okay. The measurement that you're going to get is basically from your waist down to the chair. Actually, I actually have to sit a little bit further back. And this is just going to be a straight measurement. So that gives you your crotch depth. So that tells you how deep to make that scoop, the crotch scoop. And I've seen pattern manuals that tell you to do it here from the side. I don't like doing it that way just because I have belly. So I know that I need to add enough scoop to accommodate how my belly works. But so I basically just make note of that where it comes up to. And that's all the measurements you need. I'm no expert, but this was the method that worked for me. To start off with, I drew a horizontal line and a perpendicular one to represent my hip and side seam. From there, I measured out half of the front hip width to mark out the center front seam. Then I measure up from the hip on both the center and side seam the height to the waist. 
And I also mark out where my dart placement is, which is going to be anywhere from one sixth to one quarter of the front hip width. Feel free to play around with this placement as it suits your body. Next, I did a little bit of math to determine how much fullness I needed to take out in the dart and side seam. So I subtracted the waist from the hip and divided that by two. So I'm going to swing out from my dart that amount and also from the side seam by that amount and that'll take out that fullness in the waist. Then I want to square off from those two dart legs and then create a curve which goes smoothly along both of those two squares. Pulling back out, now we can actually work on the crotch seam. From the center front waist, I measure down to the crotch depth and draw a perpendicular line out from there, create a curve starting from the hip down to about equidistance on that crotch depth line, and then I just measure half of my crotch length to determine where my inseam goes. Because my design has straight legs, I can repeat this exact same process for the back with the back measurements. Generally, you want to add a little bit of extra room in the seat, but I didn't need to on this design. Yesterday, I finished sewing up a mock-up. I think it's looking pretty good. Obviously, I haven't finished any of the seams or anything because it's a mock-up, and I'm debating I can take in the waist a bit. I think there might have been a little bit of error on my mask, but it hangs well. I like the way the crotch looks because it basically looks like a skirt and I'm okay with that, but then ah, it's pants. To convert from a basic pant to these false fall front pants, I need to make a couple of modifications to my pattern. First, I extend the dart all the way down to the hem to create a separate center front panel. I also do this on the back. For the pockets, I decided to do a straight line rather than the scoop line that I had in my initial sketch that I borrowed from the Laughing Moon design but the straight line I feel is a little bit more flattering on my body. So to create that, I first make a panel that goes from my hip down to the hem, and that becomes the front panel of the pocket. Then I determine how far down I want the fashion fabric to go into the pocket. And so I'm creating a line that I will use as a pocket facing. From the hip down, I determine how deep I want the pocket to be, so I measure my hand and go based off of that. The lining I basically do from my facing line to the bottom of the pocket and then back up to the hip line. And I'll cut that out of the lining fabric and that becomes the interior of my pocket. On the right side, I'm also going to include a phone-sized patch pocket, so that just lives inside the rest of the pocket. I'm also creating a separate waistband, so I measure two inches down from the waistline of my pattern. Removing that from the side front, the side back, and the back panel gives me room to add in that waistband. The only other thing left to do is to create a placket for the buttons to be attached to, and that'll go only on the right side.
So I just ran into a bit of a snag. I finished putting in my phone pocket. I checked, my phone fits perfectly. I put in a little buttonhole loop here so that I can put a key uh, ring on that I can then clip the carabiner onto when I need to do that. And then I did all the top stitching there. I went ahead and basted this side of the pocket closed and then I realized, oh, crud. What am I gonna do about this situ situation where the pocket meets the placket? And so two solutions that I got is to turn this under and then hand stitch that down until it'll actually connect with the lining, which I just finished cutting out. But the other thing that just came to mind is to cut the placket out of a completely separate piece of fabric. And then that way, this little bit will be sandwiched between the, this fabric and the placket. And I think that's gonna be a better solution. All right, so I've got the right hand side with placket done. This is continuous here on the lining. Then this one I can show you where basically we've made an extra long pant leg. So we've got the foot down there and then up here is the waist and then you've got this panel in between which is the pocket lining and then I've got the piping here that I'm going to do the hand stitch detail here with the sashiko thread and then this just folds up like that and then I will baste the side seam in and that's that pocket ready to go and then I can sew the panels together I'll be doing the side seams and all of my long seams with an English seaming method. I will direct you down to the description and up to my cards. Fantastical Follies Costuming as well as Fee Birchwood have both done videos on how to do this more in depth. Since this fabric is pretty thick, I'll actually be doing bound buttonholes. Retro Claude has an excellent tutorial on how to do these, so I'll link that as well in the description and in the cards.
Okay, update. Back panels finally cut, and I have all of these large offcuts, one of which I'll make into the waistband, but all of this I can use for something. There's enough yardage there, I'm sure, to make small things. And then I have just barely two yards still left of this original fabric that I got for $6. So I'm definitely gonna be making a waistcoat and then I'll find out what else I'm making, maybe even on like a hat. So we'll see. Um, got that done. Then finished basting my center front panels. I've got it all nice, neatly folded right now. I need to finish doing this decorative stitch up the top. I probably could have gotten a slightly sharper corner out of this if I really tried, but eh, whatever. Um, got that one button open and done. Pressed in my permanent press fold that'll be there so that when it's on, we've got a nice crisp trouser line, pant leg. So you can maybe see some of the basting stitches through the front, but those basting were there so that I could get that fold in there so that the exterior and interior are lined up for that. And also when I go to sew it together with the back panels and the side panels, it'll be easier to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew up the crotch seam on the lining, sew up the crotch seam on the exterior, and then baste these two layers together. And my stash might help me with that. He's been helping me a ton with the basting on the front panels. Anyway, I'll see you soon.
they are done. Took me a bit longer than I initially wanted them to take. I was hoping to get them done in time for a company office party, but I did not get that done. So, but that being said, they are done. I have worn them a couple of times. They are incredibly comfortable, and I don't think I have ever had a pair of pants that that fit as well as these had. I love the details of the Sashko thread on the buttons, on next to the piping, on the pocket. I love the pockets and the keys. Like when I had the keys in there, you'd expect like there to, to be like this weird unshapely bulge. And because of the fabric, you don't even notice them. In fact, the other day I went to the store with my bullet journal in my left hand pocket completely forgot it was there. I was driving in my car, everything, walked around the store, got home and was like, wow, wait, that was my pocket this whole time. <laughs> you know, it's it's only an A5 bullet journal, but still, to have an entire book in your pocket and just completely not even notice that it's there. So I adore it. I might adjust the placement of these buttons just a, just a hair, um, just because there's like a little bit of extra you can see that fold right there is happening because there's just a weird placement. But other than that, I absolutely love these. Cannot wait to make more pairs using this same pattern and playing around with the design and having so much fun. So if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. I'm going to reward you with some footage of my cats because I recorded a lot of footage to make these pants, and a lot of the footage was actually my cats. So if you made it this far, leave a cat emoji or something down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Bye. And this is why you should always leave out some decoy fabric, which I forgot to do. Well, I mean, there's decoy fabric down there, but not on the table. <laughs> so I have four out of six buttonholes done, but someone z have decided that my workspace is the comfiest place where they want to be right now. So I guess I'm done for now. Can I have this please? I need this panel. So I got home. I played some league, I ate some dinner, watched a movie, and here's Mr. Scamper. He's like, he don't even care that he's sleeping on my pants, which I haven't even made into pants yet. <laughs> oh yeah? What's up, Mr. T'Challa? What? You just want some lovin's? Oh, very good, uppies. Yes.